libertad para dar rienda suelta a tus pasiones. Y aquí Pablo hace eco de la enseñanza de Jesús que decía que el buen árbol, ¿qué va a dar? Buenos frutos. Es a través del Espíritu que vivimos en Jesús. How are you, everybody? Welcome to this after afternoon edition of the Trick Podcast of Joy, Gozo TV. Today is Sunday, December 20th, and it's 3.44 p.m. here in the Los Angeles area, uh, Bellflower, California, coming to you live here on this beautiful morning or afternoon, I guess. If you are on Instagram, thank you. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. If you are on Twitch, on Periscope, on YouTube, make sure that you hit all those things, notifications and bells. If you're on Facebook, tag a friend, like, comment. It helps the algorithm get out to more people. So how to detox from the chaos of 2020. Oof. What a chaotic year. Frustrations, fear, unknown, loss, just being fed up with it, right? We're all fed up with this year. And yet we need to figure out a way to undo and detox from this. I was reading about the Roaring Twenties and what happened after the last pandemic, the Spanish flu, and Illuminate runs the internet. Would you like to know how? <laughs> and what's amazing is that they were saying that the Roaring Twenties was a time of lots of drinking, lots of partying, lots of jazz. Also, the KKK came out of the Roaring Twenties violence, and of course, it led into the Great Depression of 1929. I think it was October of 29. So, wow, how do we not do the same thing? How do we avoid the, the mess that we went through, I guess, 100 plus years ago now, right? How to detox? Because I think if we're not careful... What's going to happen is, regardless of whether you're a person of faith or not, you're going to go back to, quote, spiritual practices, church, for maybe a few months for the novelty of it, to see kind of who made it and, oh, wow, you gained 20 pounds, or, oh, wow, you look the same. And then people are going to remember the chaos. And you have to know that chaos and pain and frustrations It stays in your body, in your emotions. And so we have to detox from these things because otherwise you're going to see all kinds of crazy happen. It's going to happen anyway. No one can stop that. And I think those of us who are people of the light, people of faith, people of Jesus, we are going to also face the same temptations and obstacles of anger and frustration and who knows what will trigger us next year. But there's a way, there's a better way, and that is detoxing, especially emotionally, physically, mentally detoxing. Just like your body has to detox, so does our spirit. And so I've been getting ready for next year for the last six, seven months. I've been detoxing. I've been going through a training that I hope will help you and me in this virtual community to detox. Now, what do I mean by detox? I mean to, to deal with the, the chaos that is going to remain in us. The memories, the trauma, the pain, the, the good and bad habits. When you're faced constantly with this potential of death and sickness, unemployment and all the rest, that stuff lingers unless you work it out. And so some people will go to therapy, other people will drink, other people will want to just party. And like I said, similar to the 20s, some people will turn to hate and violence. And so I think racism and hate will increase. My guess is that beer sales and... Uh, Drugs, all that will increase tremendously. Materialism will come back stronger than ever as people are going to say, I'm so tired of not being able to spend. I'm going to spend money I don't have. So debt is going to increase. 
you also have a lot of, of course, good things that will increase. But for you and me, for us to be people of faith and safe and be able to actually come out better than ever, I think that we have to detox. So what does that mean? Detox. It means to get rid of all the chaos. And how do we do that? Well, I think the first way is by getting into a support group and to be with similar or like-minded people and to have a place, a support group where you can discuss the things that you have gone through. And so similar to when you lose a loved one and you go through, you can go through it by yourself or you can join a support group. I think that's what we need to do is to be in support groups. And so you can sign up now, davidtrick.com slash thrive, thrive, davidtrick.com slash thrive. And you can register for free to my new program and support group to do a few things. First is to understand your personality and the stresses that you faced. Second is to understand the, and to heal from the emotional pain. Third is to talk about ancestral stuff, stuff that maybe your parents have been through and that maybe you're now doing the same things that they uh, do, good and bad. And then lastly is demonic influences because there's no doubt that the devil is behind every everything these days. And so you have to be able to recover from this stuff and to do that in relationship, in community with other people. Hello, my dear friend. Omar, hello. Lovely picture. David, Merry Christmas. Yes, you too. Thank you for being here, my dear friend. All the way from Puerto Rico. Glad to have you here always. And so you have to be able and willing to recover. And so, as I said, people will, if you do go to church, they'll go to church for maybe the first month or two, and then they will go to other religions, to other things that will entertain them, will distract them from the, the, the post-trauma, the PTSD. And so... If you are a spiritual leader, obviously, like I am, and if you are someone of faith, like I know most of you are, then we have to find these support groups, very much like AA grief support. And I think post-2020, you have to have some support groups. Now, what kind of support groups? Well, I think you have to have, a, you have, to have three values. These are the values that I've been working on myself. First is honesty and authenticity, to be vulnerable. So when you freak out over maybe your son being sick and you yell at him, things that have happened in my life, things that have happened to me and I've done myself, then you have to heal from that stuff and to learn new, new, new tools, new techniques on how to actually heal. So being honest about those things versus hiding that is going to be number one. Number two is the importance of doing it in a group. And so, whereas most people will say, well, I'll just pray or I'll just do yoga on my own. And I think that can be fine, but true healing from recovery, all the different uh, recovery uh, studies and, and success stories, true healing happens in community. Because you get that me too thing, like, oh, wow, I've been through the same thing. Someone says, yeah, I had to, I drank five beers last night to get through this craziness. Someone else might say, me too. And you heal together. You look to God. You look to recovery tools. You look through a process, but in community. And then third is to teach other people, to pass it down, to pay it forward, to learn techniques such as AA and the 12 steps or different systems. We're actually studying one called freedom in Christ. Actually, we're studying two. You can choose 
One is called Freedom in Christ, and the other one is called Biblical Deliverance and Spiritual Healing. So you can choose whichever track you'd like to be on, both in Spanish and English. So you can then train someone else. You can learn the tools, do it yourself, be healed in community, be vulnerable, be healed without judgment, without prejudice, without hate or people criticizing you, very important, in a safe environment with a trained moderator or guide, such as myself and others. And then you yourself will be able to pass that down and teach your daughters or your husband or your in-laws in time, obviously with tact, and they have to want to, how to heal themselves. And I think that it's not just even for your family. Let's say next year you're at the store, your local, I don't know, Costco or Ralph's or wherever you go, and you see two ladies or two men just yelling at each other in the parking lot. Guess what? I'm not saying you're going to go and be the peacemaker, but imagine if one of them is your husband or your son. Imagine you having the tools to walk that person through once they come down and hopefully you know, nothing crazy happens, to then go home and walk them through the training that we're going to teach you and share with you and actually begin to heal them and help them understand some of the trauma, some of the demonic stuff, some of the emotional pain, all that stuff that we're going to talk about. And so you can go to davidtrigg.com slash thrive and sign up for that. It's free and it is a kind of a basic course. And then there's a premium course that is paid only $39 a month for the whole year where you can not only be in relationship with another group or with a group via Zoom. And so you don't have to be here local, wherever you are, Spanish and English. And then you're going to also get a one-on-one -on -one phone call with me once or twice a month, all depending on kind of what you need and what you want. But the basic course is free davidtrigg.com slash thrive. Let me see if I can put it in the comments here somewhere. Let me see here. How do I do that? This is a new software that I have here, but I think, I think, I think it's there. Okay. So I'm going to edit that so that it'll say the right things. Okay, so there it is, davidtree.com slash thrive. You can go to that link right now. It's open. Registration is open all the way through December 31st. So you have 11 days, midnight on New Year's Eve, to register for free for, you don't have to be, as I said, a here local or a part of my church, or you don't have to even know me personally. We already did this twice, and it was amazing. We had people of all ages, of both Spanish and English speakers, some that I know, some that I've never met. And the first one, I think it was in September, and it was amazing. And then we started one in Spanish just a couple of weeks ago, and it's been powerful. So we're going to do this again all of next year, the next 12 months. We're going to do this. We're going to do the basic course three times a year, and then we're going to do the premium content, which is paid all year round, because this is a life commitment of Thrive 2021. And you can just go to that page, look at the content, read some of the stuff. I have some free samples. I am going to be loading some videos of people that have been healed and how they're recovering as we speak from ancestral stuff, from emotional pain, from ungodly truths, from feeling condemned by God or feeling just simply, like I said, traumatized by this year. And in community, in relationship through biblical trainings, by the Holy Spirit's presence in us, in relationship, authentic relationship, and vulnerable conversations with a professional guided tour. Not only am I a seminarian and a pastor, but I'm also a certified life coach in the area of fear and anxiety. And so, and we also, of course, can refer you to professional therapists and doctors. And so, but this is biblical deliverance based on biblical truths, but it combines science as well as um, spirit. And so you can try it out. It's free. You can check it out wherever you are watching this. Go to that link there on the screen, right above the microphone here. Sign up. It's free all the way through December 31st. And then 
we'll start. It'll be three times next year for the basic course, kind of the boot camp. And then if you want to go to the premium content, it's only $39 a month. You can pay it all at once. You can pay for three months or six months, or you can go month to month. And you are going to get not just the most advanced content, but as I said, we're going to interact one-on-one, -on -one, you and I, to work through your specific hangup because everyone has different things. So some case studies I had without obviously going into, you know, mentioning names or that, but I had a client that was dealing with, mm, well, I had a few. One that was just facing issues at work, let's just put it that way, with a certain someone who was bothering and kind of just, I don't know, just a being inappropriate with her. And eventually they got in a relationship and she felt bad, but he was married. She felt horrible, but she realized that a lot of those, those habits first in many ways were kind of already building up inside of her. And when she came to me, she was ready to stop the relationship. But what we talked about was the ungodly uh, truths, some of the things, the lies that she had been telling herself. And so we dealt with it at that level and she stopped the relationship and she's now on her way back to recovery. I had another client, another, I, I call them clients or friends of mine, another, another uh, friend, let's just say, right? That came to me and he was a man in his maybe, I don't know, maybe early 60s. And he was a very devout Catholic and uh, even studied to be a priest. But then he began to deal with homosexual thoughts and with uh, wanting to, this is when he was a younger man. And now he wanted basically just to confess and to un, just to unburden him himself. And so we were able to just uh, go through the class. And when we, he and I met one-on-one -on -one over Zoom and phone calls and such and FaceTime. And this wasn't about him not being gay or being, you know, it, it wasn't about taking this out of him. It was more about just him being free from the guilt that he felt from his faith, from his upbringing, et cetera. And it was very powerful. He's on his way to uh, true freedom in Christ. Then I also spoke to, let's see, another young person who just needed some financial help with school, and we don't offer financial assistance. We're not a bank or anything like that. But it dealt more with fear that her parents were not supportive of her education, and so they weren't helping her financially, even though she was just a high school graduate. And so... As I said, we don't do financial loans. It would be great someday to actually loan, make loans. That's something that I would like to do is to actually not only create jobs for especially young people, but to do small business micro loans, especially to entrepreneurs. It's a real passion of mine. But anyway, so I was, we were able to help her to find her true self as a, actually as a beautician, she loves beauty, even though her parents wanted her to study, I don't know, something else. And so it was a process of forgiving her parents, forgiving, uh, asking God for forgiveness for things that she felt she needed to be forgiven for, and then to forgive herself, which is the biggest sometimes hang up for most people. There are many, I mean, as I said, over the last year alone, We've been able to help, I would say, maybe 10 or 12 people in the middle of this pandemic. And in previous years, through other tools that I have used, it's never been quite this urgent. We have helped maybe hundreds of people to be free from emotional pain, from ungodly truths, from demonic influence, from ancestral sin, or generational sin, you could call it, or generational curses. And we do that through... As I said, science, psychology, and biblical deliverance, prayer, the Holy Spirit, the Bible, the Word of God, but in relationship. We do it in community. And it's very powerful. You can, as I said, go to that link there on the screen, davidtrigger.com slash thrive and sign up. It's free through the end of this year. And we'll do it three times next year. Usually there's six-week 
courses, terms, sessions. And then we also offer a paid service, which is more in depth. It's um, more advanced and it's also, it also includes bonuses. One of them, which is to have two, one or two sessions with me every month for the whole year. You can pay $39 a month all at once, every three months, every six months or monthly. And so every month you get one or two sessions, depends on what you want. Some people don't want that many sessions. Some people want two or more. Some people want to talk every day. And I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. And uh, we can talk about that if you'd like. Now, this is something that I myself have been healed of. And so if you know my story, I grew up a very happy kid in love with God, music, school, and really always just wanting to succeed in life. And by the grace of God, I have everything I've ever wanted. But when I was 10, I went through a terrible war in my home country. I, I had to be, uh, you could call it torn apart from my family at only 10, 11 years of age as a young male to come uh, to the U.S. And I had a very loving family here. But in my 20s, I began to deal with very traumatic panic attacks that almost destroyed my life and my marriage and my health. But by the grace of God and spiritual tools, therapy, spiritual deliverance, the word of God relationship with mentors and groups like this, back then there weren't any video courses. I mean, I wish, imagine. I had to drive for two hours and pay $150 for one session. And only, I only got that help because by the grace of God, I was with a, a leader, a spiritual leader who had been through similar stuff and it just happened. This is of course God's grace that I had a panic attack in his office and he said, oh, I think I know what you're going through. I can help you. And he referred me. But imagine if I had been home with my beautiful grandma who didn't speak the language, who didn't know about this kind of stuff. I probably, who knows, would have turned to drinking or drugs or who knows what. And then I began to deal with even younger stuff that, especially the abandonment piece and what I call my airport experience. When I was eight, even younger, I was a little boy, I came here to the States and it was my first time that I felt that this world wasn't safe. These are things that I have had to work through for many years. I was at LAX, eight, nine years old. My, my younger sister was five, six, and we had traveled here by ourselves. <laughs> and I was so ready. I wasn't afraid one bit. I've always been a wide-eyed adventurer, just, just a risk taker. Always been an achiever. Anyway, but that day we landed at LAX. I didn't speak the language. I didn't know a drop of English. I was barely speaking any anything. I was eight years old, nine years old. My daughter, my sister began to cry because no one was there to pick us up. <laughs> and all these people at LAX were just staring at us. And I was, I had no idea what to do. I'd never been to LAX, never been anywhere, never left the country. And there was no one around, no one to pick us up, no one to tell us anything. I told my sister, let's go and go to the counter. And she was crying, my poor sister. Shout out to my beautiful sister. And then like 20 minutes later, my grandma came and picked us up and everything was fine. But that day, in some ways, it marked my sense of instability. If you know the Enneagram, it's one of the, one of the resources that we do in the premium content, which is a typology type of personality stuff. If you know about personality things, the DISC or MBTI or other, uh, the, the big four, I think it's called, then you know that one of the things that some, and I do deal with this, you might be the same way deal with, is a sense of um, that this world isn't safe, that the sky's falling, that, you know, the other shoe's going to drop any minute. And so imagine this pandemic, right, has triggered a lot of people with similar thoughts that maybe they went through when they had their airport experience. And so those are the things that I have healed from. And I practice these things daily, breathing, yoga, 
centering prayers, lighting candles, listening to affirmations, praying with my wife, calling my, my support team, my, my sponsors, my, I don't know, my, my group, my support group, just even this week. I was feeling out of it and all these things were rolling around in my head, the same thing, kind of this sky, you know, this, this world isn't safe kind of thing. And so I called my group, texted a few of them, talked to a few, even today we had a conversation with a few and uh, just healed from it just to kind of breathe another day and to be here to share these truths with you. And so, and that really is the, the, I guess the program is to become a wounded healer, like Henry Nowen said, one of my mentors, Dallas Willard, and I had the chance to hear him lecture at USC a couple of times, would always talk about the great omission and this problem that people of faith have that they're, they go to church for 20, 30, 40 years, but there's their problems, emotional hangups and ancestral sins and all these things, they remain. And so you see people in church that never grow. They have been going to church their whole lives, but you still see them dealing with greed or alcohol or anger or fear. And they die with the crucifix per se in their hands or the Bible in their hand and, and yet tortured by some of those airport experiences that maybe they never worked out. Because how do you work these things out? For a lot of Hispanics, we are trained to talk to your mom or to talk to a priest or to go to church on Sundays or a lot of times to hide it and to instead eat, to have party, have parties for the Asian community. It's more about respect and honor and about kind of a stiff upper lip. You could say for African-American cultures, similar, you have kind of this external, a uh, very religious activity, a lot of religious activity, but you struggle being open and honest with God. And you have other cultures, the white culture, you would say it's more therapeutic in their approach, more scientific and more traditional. And that can sometimes prevent true vulnerability. And so you have every culture, every religious group that has kind of their approach. You have people, of course, that have different faiths that will turn to Buddhism. That's really, I would say, the cool cult, the cool religion these days, the last maybe five years. It's cool to be Buddhist. It's cool to be Hindu. It's cool to be law of attraction, manifestation, universalism, post-evangelical, post-Christian. It's cool to do that. And I've been through that myself. I, I went through a season where I didn't know what to believe. And by the grace of God, I had these very beautiful, I remember uh, older ladies who would always pray for me and brought me back to the faith of my, of my youth and to be here today. And of course, my parents were praying for me. But you have a ton of people who never make it back. And so they get lost to other religions, to other faiths, to just, as I said, things that seem more relevant. That And honestly, they actually help people. If I'm you, if I'm, let's say, a 28-year-old or a 34-year-old, and I am in a religion or spiritual practice that calms my nerves, that focuses my mind, that helps my body to breathe, you think I'm going to ignore it of course not right you're gonna go and and follow that religion or whatever right i know that people are against the word religion but against those practices or you're gonna be for those practices because they help you at the end of the day people need help we just want to be healed right and, and yet the church that i love has i mean just think of the last few years Either it's known by hate or now by right-wing politics or by racism or by before. It used to be by spending money and consumerism or even way back 
for being business driven and being about just growing and, and being like a, I don't know, just being commercial, I guess, huge churches and huge fancy pastors and the coolest of sermons and you name it. And what happened is that people flocked. They still, I mean, not this year as much, but they flocked to these places because people were in need and people just are in need of help. And so I don't have like the perfect church, of course. I'm not saying, oh, come to my church. <laughs> we're better. No, I, I don't. That would be silly. But what I envision is a place where we can be delivered from this trauma. Because otherwise, we're going to repeat the Roaring Twenties. The drinking, the violence. I mean, as I said, the KKK came out of the Twenties and then the Great Depression in 1929, 10 years after the end of the pandemic. So let's say by the grace of God, this thing ends in 2021, sometime next year. That means we have nine years to figure this out for the rest of this decade. Let's say you're in your 20s. When you're 31, who do you want to be? It would be foolish for us to ignore the past because they say, you know, history repeats. And so I've spent hours studying the 20s, the Great Depression, the Spanish flu, the, as I said, the racism of the KKK. And guess where the, the Klan came from? Religion, Christian people. And so we have to be aware, we have to be mindful that just because you go to church doesn't mean that you're going to get this right. You, we have to be in some sort of environment of recovery and truth. And it, it's not just for those addicts anymore. We all have been affected by this pandemic. Even if you are a even keel person, at the end of the day, you're gonna, it's going to hit you. Maybe just once a year, you might be one of those very special people. I'm married to one who's amazing, very stable person. But uh, even just these last few days, you know, we've been praying and grieving and crying, and tears, and it's good. I think that tears, well, we know that tears are healing. And so I cry all the time, but I know a lot of people don't like to cry. But crying... If you are more kind of a day-to-day -day person, is a sign of healing and of a vulnerability. Now, most people are afraid to be vulnerable because they get judged by parents, by church, by bosses, by their in-laws, their sisters, brothers. And so I don't blame people. I learned to be vulnerable in therapy. I had to pay, as I said, hundreds of dollars every week to be to be vulnerable <laughs> i did the like they say the ten thousand hours of therapy and ten thousand dollars easily to heal to come to a place where i could overcome those airport experiences but economics and as i said just cultural stuff prevents most people from true deliverance and especially now with people don't even go to church or, quote, watch church anymore. And so that's why booze and drugs and weed and cocaine and or overspending or overeating or violence or just materialism, just workaholism, and, and, and then even worse things is what normally rises post-pandemic, just learning from history. Now, coffee is my drug of choice, I must say. <laughs> Mm. We will not be shaken. That was the uh, our motto here at our church in 2016. Can you believe that? 2016, this is four years later. Man, am I prophetic or what, right? No, the big one didn't hit LA, but <laughs> this virus hit the world. We will not be shaken. And then God gave me this year a theme. He always does. He already gave me the theme for next year. He actually has given me two, and I'm just waiting for him to tell me which one is the right one. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, so this year he gave me open the eyes of my heart, Lord, which of course made a lot of sense, right? 2020, 2020 vision. 
but I had no idea that it actually was going to be open the eyes of my heart, not only my heart, but internally to become more aware of how much we need to change. And a lot of people, including myself, but many spiritual leaders, we've been talking about the need for change for years. You know who talks about this a lot? Yep. People that have been through recovery. I have a lot of podcasts that I listen to, and it's those people that have been through hell and back that have been warning us, including myself, for years about a coming deliverance or, I guess, apocalypse, abyss, as Joseph Campbell will call it. And this is the abyss. Now, we have two choices, at least. Either you're going to go back and recede into, like I said, drinking, alcohol, emotional hangups, abuse, racism, hate, buying your brain out, sexual promiscuity, <laughs> or to heal and to become a, actually a wounded healer and to become a part of the solution and, and build the future. And to, you know, what was amazing about the Roaring Twenties is that jazz, um, I guess, became more known. And also they had heroes such as, I think they called Babe Ruth one of the heroes because the Babe was just such a, I guess, a, a fresh of breath air, a breath of fresh air. I always mix those up. And are you going to be that hero in 2020? I want to be a hero. Do you want to be a hero? Who wants to be a hero here? You want to be a hero? Leave a comment. Thumbs up. Do you want to be a hero or do you want to be a zero over the next 12 months, three years, five years? Do you want to be a hero or a zero? I want to be a hero. I don't want to be a part of the KKK of the next, of the, of this next decade. God forbid, right? How horrible. Or anything that deals with racism. And yet, I mean, we face it this year. You think that's an accident? What happened with George Floyd and all the other victims and all the riots? You think that's just gone suddenly? You think it can't get worse? Of course it can. But we can be heroes. I want to be a hero. Do you want to be a hero or a zero? I want to be a hero. Join this training. DavidTrigger.com slash thrive. It's free so you can... So you can gain access. And if you sign up before the 31st of this year, you get the bonuses, the free bonuses that are going to be, there's at least three. One of them I'll tell you about, and that's one-on-one -on -one, uh, or live calls with me a couple times a month. But then, okay, I'll spill the beans in the second one. You're actually going to be, if you want, not everyone likes this, to be on my podcast, which goes out to 1,100 people every, every month. And you can share your story. You can talk about your business, talk about your, your program. If you yourself are developing a course, a program, a training. And then third, the free bonus is you're going to actually get my training on media tools, podcasting, live, live streaming, all this stuff that you see me do is something that, you know, I'm a computer engineer by, by trade, I guess my undergrad. And plus, I just love this stuff. And so you will gain free access if you sign up for the bonus. I mean, for the premium content, we have two, two levels, basic and premium. If you sign up for the premium content, you get all the bonuses all before December 31st, only $39 a month. You can go month to month. You can do three months, six months, 12 months. I would recommend to do 12 months because Everyone that has gone through the class these last few months says, I need more. <laughs> We're just scratching the surface after three months. And so, and plus, as I said, you get all of the tools that I use so that you can then train other people, start your own programs, teach people, share this with your kids, with your friend, your neighbors, with your parents, and to be the answer to somebody's prayer, to be a healer yourself. The goal is not to be like, what I had to do is be in therapy for 10 years, spending thousands and thousands of dollars. I don't want that for you. Really, I would not do that again. I wish my therapeutic experience, it was great. It, first, it hadn't been so expensive, and second, it hadn't taken so long. I wish I had had more content daily or calls or videos or podcasts to listen to. It wasn't until the last maybe five years that I finally 
got together all these resources, but who has time for that? You don't have time to be looking for all these resources, right? But that's what I'm offering is not only my content, but to connect you with so many resources that are out there. Podcasts and video courses, including, of course, the one that I put together. And the bonus, as I said, are first the, the live sessions with me, but then I spilled the beans. I didn't, I wasn't trying. I was trying not to, didn't mean to. You're going to be on my podcast. It's part of the bonus, part of the free, free prizes. <laughs> and if you sign up for the premium content, you will get my training on how to start a podcast how to do live streaming so that you can then teach other people through this, these platforms that are free, that you don't have to have a thousand dollar or hundred thousand dollar studio, NBC or CNN. You can just do it using your phone, using this guy here and a couple of resources and a couple of templates to know what to say, blah, 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 and get your content on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, all the rest so that you can be a healer yourself, because this is a movement of healing. See, this is not just you come to my church or you just buy my content. This is you going viral through healing your friends. My, my, my dream is to have the whole earth go through this training, all 8 billion people in different languages. That would be my dream for the next 10 years. Where do I wanna be in 2031, right? Yeah. It's 2020 and 2031. I want the whole world to have gone through this biblical training and spiritual deliverance. That's what I want. I can't do that. I'm not going to speak in front of millions, right? We may never do that again. It's going to be as you take these tools, you get them into your mind, heart, and soul. You get delivered yourself, and you can then have access to the resources, the tools, the worksheets, the, the books, the podcast. You can yourself add your two cents to it, or you can just use what I have and then spread it yourself. And it would be great if we could tell stories and you can come back on my podcast and you can talk about how God is using you in the life of someone else. I have someone who already told me that as soon as she's done with our training, I just spoke to her actually last week, she's going to talk to her boss <laughs> about some of the problems that they're having at work using these resources. It's not even like a church thing. Her boss at work, I think she's in education or something like that. Maybe it's a nonprofit. Can you imagine using these tools of love and grace? Now, she has to obviously be careful and be tactful. I'm going to coach her. See, I'm coaching her through it. So she and I get on the phone. She's part of my premium content, you know, a couple of times a month. And I'm coaching her through it, how to do it, what to say, what not to say. These are the things that I'm practicing myself. These are the things that I practice with my beautiful wife. I learn from her. I help her. And these are the things that I practice with our own children, with our teens, young adults, as they are now in college and also healing from this mess and using the Bible, spiritual deliverance, these tools, the Enneagram, which is, as I said, a typology, bring, bringing all this with vulnerability, learning how to speak, learning how not to blame or how to use you and your, it's your fault that I got sick or it's your fault that I'm broke. And this is what we practice at our house every day. And so these are the things that we're sharing with you because it's working in our lives. And these are the things, I don't know what else is out there. There's a lot of crazy stuff out there, right? And I don't know what is going to bring. Now, as I said, the other option is, yeah, just watch those videos in the Roaring Twenties. If you're, if you're not familiar with that, there's a bunch of them. I've seen hundreds of them, well, tons of them. And you can learn from history, right? And so how are you going to handle your... Now, I don't teach financial freedom or any of that, but you know that financial decisions are 100% emotional. And of course, you're going to make emotional decisions here in the next few months in terms of spending. What if you're making a big mistake in buying that house or in getting in debt over that car or that dress even, or I don't know, 
or school? What if you're not in the frame of mind? You know, sometimes our friends and our parents, they see things, but we are the last to see some of the things. And it's not just the negative stuff, also our gifts. You know, I, what healed me over time was God giving me this guitar that you see back there. I don't know, somewhere, you know, my guitars and this microphone. That's what helped me. And books, books. That's what God used as tools. Of course, his spirit, of course, his presence and his word. But as far as tools, it was this microphone, my guitar, and books, knowledge, knowledge. Those are the things that I hung on to when I was feeling like that kid at the at the airport, abandoned and lost with my sister crying next to me, panicking. But God gave me these tools. You know, that's why I love Psalm 23, where God says to David, or David says of God, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, those are the tools that David had to lead the sheep. A rod is how he would pull the sheep back from a cliff. His staff is sometimes he would have to, you know, spank him a little bit to, to, to stay in, in, in the, inside the pen. So sometimes they were tools of love and sometimes of tough love. And that's why David said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, boundaries are good. Like I said, you know, the one client who was involved with a married man, you think... She needed me to say, oh, God loves you. No, she came because she wanted to change. She didn't want that anymore. She was ruining her life and this man's life and who knows. But it wasn't just, okay, do's and don'ts. It was going behind the scenes. But sometimes that love looks like guidance and do's and don'ts. And, uh, but with love and tools and resources, conversation with biblical deliverance, spiritual healing, with science, with, uh, as I said, relationship. And that's what David Trigg.com slash thrive is all about. This is what, man, that's what I'm dreaming of. It's just a movement of the spirit through this program, through these tools by the power of the Holy spirit in relationship. First to do it at my house, first in me. Then in our home, my wife and I, then with our kids, this is the stuff I've been practicing with them, as I said, for years. And then in our spiritual faith community, then our virtual community, and then really the whole world. And not me at the center of it or people learning from me. This is not like a cult or some guru or I'm not any of those things. There's only one God and his name is Jesus. And he's the one that I worship and I follow. And so should we all. But by sharing these tools that I have learned from my mentors, therapy and school and life and books and mentorship and practice and all these things so that you can then bring healing. And then we can connect through the podcast and through these tools and hopefully share stories so that people can, can keep joining this movement of, of, of healing. Not like Benny Hinn style healing where you're induced into a into a euphoria i'm not saying god doesn't work that way but that's just not what i have been called to do this is conversation spiritual biblical healing that happens in relationship through groups through small groups of four five six people one ten fifty groups like that and eventually hundreds and thousands of groups like this this is a movement of deliverance of spiritual authentic Vulnerable deliverance in groups, revolution of the heart, through guided meditations, through biblical authority, deliver, biblical teaching, science, personality types, biology, neuroscience, understanding how the brain works, understanding ancestral sins, understanding. Now, as I said, we're not doctors, but we are people who can refer you if you need a doctor or a therapist. I'm connected to real therapists, real doctors who love Jesus and who can guide you. And so we are connected. We can, we can refer you, of course. But for most of us, we need guided deliverance. And so this is what I dream of. I dream of a white Christmas, but I also dream of deliverance. And of course, 
The question is, do you want to be a hero? Can you say yes, amen? Do you want to be a hero? I want to be a hero. I don't want to be a zero in 2021. I don't want to just be another bozo on the bus. I am a bozo on the bus. I'm, I'm no one special. But by grace and through grace, we can accomplish great things. As we come out of this craziness, and yet the devil is waiting outside of 2020, right around the corner. He's waiting with all the lasciviousness and all of the narcissism and all of the, the usual stuff that he has planned for you and for me and for your kids and for your friends. But we have a choice to make. David Trigger.com slash thrive. Sign up today before the bonuses go away. December 31st is when the bonuses go away and then the program begins next year. Well, if you have any comments, let me know or questions. Let me see here. All right. Okay. Well, once again, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for being here. And I will see you next time. Make sure you go to that link, okay? Okay, bye-bye.